Hi, this is Spencer from Spencer Colgan's Wallpaper. And I think I'll just let you watch. We have a couple of holes going on. And they're pretty big. Fiberglass mesh tape. It sticks to the wall. I'm pushing it in to give it a cavity into which my hot mud will go. So I'm pushing it in in order to give it a substantial cavity onto which the new mud can grab and, and fill itself in to make a new surface. I'm putting this up, pushing in first, because that's the area that got to be covered first, in the hole, and then outside, so that when I push outside, it doesn't take from the hole, right? I'm crisscrossing the mesh tape so as to create a tie, like you're tying a knot. It ties it in, okay? Now, I've mixed my, my mud in this pan, and as you know, I don't like mud pans, but it does contain it and it doesn't allow it to um, fall out all over the place, like on a hawk. I'm working on a ceiling, so I want the maximum protection from dropping this stuff all over the floor. So here we go. Now, the hot mud, for those of you who know, you already know it. But for those, there are people who don't know it. So I want to explain. Hot mud is quick drying plaster. It's quick drying compound. And it's, it's powder that you mix with water. And it dries quickly because it has a lot of accelerants in it. Okay? And right now as I'm mixing it, it has a pancake-like batter that's been sitting in your mixing bowl for five minutes. It's a little stiff, but it's not stiff enough. Okay? If this really is common sense, if you think about it, the plaster has to be thin enough to go into that hole and grip into those little mesh crevices. See those little mesh crevices there? So your plaster has to be kind of thin, right? Look. I just want to show you the mixture, how loose it is. See it? See it? Dripping like that. That would be great if we were working on a wall, right? But you know on a ceiling it's gonna fall out. So I'm, I'm keeping watch, I'm, I'm holding on to it, and when these accelerants kick in, and this stuff starts getting really hard, it doesn't get hard, but it starts to, that's when I'm going to stick it into these fiberglass mesh uh, little pockets, right? So, just bear with me as we wait together. How's that? Let's just wait together, all right? It's almost there, but just wait. It's worth watching. I am going to just do the same repair a couple of feet away from where you're looking. And I'll show you that afterwards. I'm amazed. I am amazed, folks, at the absolute unprofessional work, workmanship that's taken place in our country. I am absolutely amazed at it. I, I'm, it's, dis, it's disgusting. You see this? The person who painted the ceiling, they had a hole in the ceiling. I don't know why. I can't figure it out. But what they did was they just blew a bunch of popcorn up into it and hoped that it would stick together. And it did. They just blew popcorn texture in it. All right? Now, I, would do, I will show you what I was doing. See over here? We have another hole. Another issue. They just blew popcorn into it and figured, let the next owner deal with it. Okay, so here's my, t here's my mixture. Let's just show you what I'm dealing with here. 
Not, not too bad yet. But you know, if I put that up on the ceiling, the same thing that's happening here is going to happen on the ceiling, right? So let's just wait. just share a thought with you. So you hire a worker. He tells you he's a painter, right? And you expect that he is. And you pay him. By the way, you got to pay him top dollar. Because painting is a trade and you get what you pay for. But now let's say you hire the painter and he doesn't know what he's doing. And then the painter says, well, I'll just quit. Now, you who live in America... Why would a painter be able to tell you, I quit? Think about it. Real hard. Can you tell your boss, I quit? No, right? Because you work hard for a living, right? Well, somebody who's getting a check from the government, he can do that. Whose income is subsidized by the government. They can do that. Now, I'm taking a, what is this? An 8-inch taping knife. You can use anything that will push this plaster up into it. And I'm gonna, I'm going to also use my 14 inch boat trowel, okay? Just watch me. All right, I'm pushing the mud up into that hole. Uh, okay, oh, I didn't catch it all, but my floor is protected. Okay, check it out, okay. Now, it's gripping, right? Why is that? Because it's soft enough to grip into those little checkered boxes on my fiberglass mesh tape, right? Because I made it, you know, soft enough. And now, because I have five minute mud, it's doing a nice job. Let's leave that for a moment. Join me over here, okay? Sorry, folks. This is the real, this is the real life. This isn't movie star videos. So please bear with me, okay? Now, same idea. A less, a less deep and a less wide hole than that one. So I got a little compound on it. I'm just going to push it out. So, oh, boy. She's hardened up real quick. Perfect. I'm flattening it out. I'm moving quickly now, guys. I want to put another coat on the first repair. This is getting like really hard. Still workable though, but you know, if you've ever used this stuff, you've got to work quick. Because otherwise, it takes time to mix it. You know, it's, it can become a waste of time. Okay, check it out. Let's see. I'll show you what I'm doing, okay? I'm flattening it out so that all I gotta do is shave it rather than add to it, you know what I'm saying? Let me bring you back to it. By the way, do you know what it means to retemper the compound? Retemper? It means that after your compound has gone through the acceleration process, whereby the chemicals accelerate the drying process and you have a plaster rock, theoretically you could break it up, pulverize it again, make it into powder, right? And then add water, right? No can't do that. That's called retempering. I've tried it. And guess what happens? The chemicals. I'm not a, uh, a uh, chemical engineer, but you can tell that the chemicals 
have already bonded and they don't break away again. And you can tell that the uh, substance is severely compromised with regard to strength. So the only time you can add water is when the powder is, is, is in its original state. Don't retemper the compound. Get yourself a new batch, throw it out, okay? This is Spencer Colgan from Spencer Colgan's Wallpaper. Please click on like. Thanks for watching my channel. Subscribe.